Hi, everybody. Hey, Bobby. Hey, everyone. Oh, hi. Bobby, I apologize. I have to drop off in just 15 minutes. So I'll set you as host before I go. Oh, that's great. No, no worries. No worries. Busy day. It's a Monday. Yeah, Mondays are hectic. And it's a some kind of a holiday. I think it's probably the easiest hol holiday to celebrate anymore. It's May Day. Who can have a problem with the first day of May? <laughs> oh, that's right. I yeah, wasn't realizing it was May Day. You're right. I'm gonna celebrate May Day from now on. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Good excuse to yeah. Nice have neutral. A day. Day. <laughs> yeah, totally. So. We'll see. So it looks like we have a lot of uh, mentees on. Uh, so we'll focus a little bit more on the mentorship program um, and go over what the task force is doing. We'll just give it like another minute to see if John hops on because he usually likes to run the onboarding task force section of this call. Um, but we can start with documentation. So I'm going to share my screen. Actually, wait, before I do that, I just want to grab another screen. Oh, there it is. Okay, perfect. Okay. So again, um, welcome to the um, Hyperledger uh, task force uh, call for Monday morning. It, we cover the documentation task force and the onboarding task force, each of which have um, a mentorship uh, project looking for mentees at this particular moment. And some of them might be on the call. So we're going to give you a chance to introduce yourself. This is a Hyperledger call. So there's a code of conduct um, and a, a antitrust policy. Um, if you haven't seen them before, let me know and I can send you a copy. If not, um, they're right on, on the website. Excuse me for just a second, I need to shut my door. So one moment. Sorry about that. Okay, so again, uh, if you need the antitrust policy or the code of conduct, let me know. Um, and they're on the wiki page. You can just hit the search bar up in the right and you can find them. Um, so today, uh, this is the, uh, we'll start with the documentation task force. Um, I am on the TOC and I am the mentor for this particular task force. So before we get started with the details on that, why don't we have everyone here um, introduce themselves? Um, we'll start with David real quick. Sorry, just coming off mute. Hey, everybody. Nice to meet you. If I haven't met you before, I'm looking forward to working with you here in the task force. So my name is David. I'm one of the Linux Foundation employees supporting the Hyperledger community. So I'm here just to hear what the group is doing and to see where I can help out with anything around documentation or onboarding. Thank you, David. How about, um, I'm gonna try to pronounce this correctly, Anna Suya. Hi, Bobby. Um, good day. I suppose this is morning for you, right? Uh, yes, it is. My, it's my 9.30 p.m. for us. I'm from India, Bangalore. Um, actually, I attended last week's call, and uh, uh, my name is already in the documentation talk, ta uh, task force. So I'm founder of Bini World Innovations Private Limited, and like um, companies basically into IoT with blockchain, and uh, like I'm happy to be part of uh, Hyperledger community. 
Yes, well, I listened to the call last week and uh, thank you for contributing so much. Uh, we'll have specific stuff to go forward um, to work on. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, yeah. Devesh? Uh, hey, Bobby. Hey, everyone. Uh, I'm a computer science uh, student. Uh, my name is Devish and I'm from India. And I have been joining the Hyperledger Meet for a couple of times. Uh, and I'm also contributing to the Hyperledger doc docs uh, like Desu. And I have recently started learning blockchain and I'm looking forward to contribute more. Thank you. And I just wanted to say, um, if you're interested, um, you might want to look at joining as a co-mentor with me, because um, I know you have some awesome skills that you could share uh, with the mentee for the program, if you're interested in that. Um, Ishan, yeah, sure. you want to... Oh, good. Ishan, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm audible. Hello, am I audible? Hello, yeah, we can hear you. All right. Uh, hey, Bobby. Hey, David. Hey, everyone. Uh, I am Ishan. I am from India. And uh, I'm currently in my second year. I'm a computer science undergrad. And this is my first call, uh, as well as uh, my initial stages of participating in the Hyperledger community. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to get along with everyone. Well, we're glad you're here. Um, and I hope that this call um, entices you to keep moving forward uh, with your mentor application. Um, and yep. Saharuba, I'm sure I didn't say that correctly, but I hoped it's close enough. Yeah, so hello, everyone. I'm a pre-final student pursuing CS and interested in working on documentation project. I was also selected as the second preferred candidate to work on the documentation at Moja Global as part of GSORT last year. I just wanted to ask uh, you that, is there any task necess necessary to perform to get selected as an intern? Um, you would, um, I will drop a link into, um, just give me a moment. Where did I go for that? Here is a link to the page that um, has all of the information that you would need. And it's in the chat in just a moment. Um, And that'll give you the dates and the requirements to apply. And there's also, um, if you're interested, as well as the documentation uh, task force, there is an uh, onboarding task force which is closely related to uh, the documentation task force has more to do with how the community walks into the door um, and how we can make that like a few clicks to get them where they need to be. Um, and that we'll talk about um, in the second part of the call today. So, and then finally, Tracy. Yeah, hello, Tracy Kurt, um, the chair of the Hyperledger Technical Oversight Committee, and I uh, have put together a template on the documentation uh, that we can use moving forward, and happy to be here. Awesome, thank you. Um, okay, so we're going to move on. Hopefully, you, you can, everyone can still see my screen. Um, so what we've been doing to um, catch everyone up is the documentation task force, we found a need in the community for some kind of guidance for people to, um, and not just the maintainers um, and project um, coders, but everyone. So the project has multiple levels. Uh, the first level again is definitely the readme docs that come from GitHub. Um, there's some, again, we have, um, some tooling um, support for that and, and I I put that? yeah, paid tooling support. Um, and what we need is a way to communicate that to the rest of the community that these tools are available. Uh, let me start with the beginning of the um, actual tasks for the documentation. So right now we're further as a task force, further defining how the mentor mentee um, is going to um, do his tasks in a certain time, her, him or her tasks in a certain timeline. Um, so we want to sit down and kind of uh, look at the deliverables and spread them out over the timeline of the mentorship program. And that's something we'll be working on, I guess, this week. Um, there's still two weeks open for the mentorship program um, applicants. So that, again, um, 
is a great time for you to um, just read through these uh, wiki pages that we have and see if this is the flavor that you really want to um, work on. Um, and then um, the one of the first things that that uh, mentee for the documentation task force is going to have to do is again, if we scroll down, I don't want to scroll too fast to make anyone dizzy, but um, here are the projects that I pulled out of the mentorship accepted projects this year out of the 33 that specifically had documentation needs. And I want to work closely with these mentees, with our mentee uh, for documentation to support their needs so that whatever we've got at this point from the task force, uh, we can communicate to these mentees and say, here, we're here to help you when it comes time for you to, you know, do your piece for documentation, let us know and we'll help you. And I know these, um, a lot of the projects, especially Cactus has been calling for help for documentation for a really long time. Um, so this is a great time to really get in there and say, here, here's what we have. And again, we have um, places um, the GitHub repository, which Tracy was referring to, we can show you that's already set up. It just needs to be propagated with the information. Um, but the first thing that that uh, mentee is going to have to kind of, of all the mentees, hit the ground running um, because they're going to have to right away contact or, you know, there is that um, welcome mentee presentation that Min puts on we're going to get a couple of minutes for the, our mentee to talk to the other mentees at that uh, initial meeting. And I think David and I had talked about that and that, you know, Min was okay with that. Um, so that's something that, um, that we have to like make sure that we have the tools ready for the mentee right away. Like saying, here's our suggestions for you to, you know, use or what have you. Um, so again, these were the deliverables, these five, um, points for the deliverables that we put into the documentation mentee application. So if uh, the mentees are applying for it, these are the deliverables that they're um, getting their head around being able to accomplish. And I dropped in here um, just some, um, actually, let me get Tracy's in here too. So it's all in one spot. In just a moment. Ah. Okay, so now we have um, the uh, template for the GitHub repository where we're going to put our suggestions. Again, we have um, that paid tooling policy. Uh, so that's a recommendation that again, the mentee will have to like look at and figure out how best to communicate, you know, what's available. We're not really ever going to tell the community what they have to use, but uh, more, most of the community in a survey has, has suggested that they want this information. So, um, Again, that would be um, the GitHub part of it. Um, and then the marketing part, again, this is just the style guide for documentation. People want to just see where our logos are. They wanna do a meetup. They want that uh, slide that David supplies uh, for all the meetups to advertise their meetup, to put on your meetup homepage, and then you know to use your presentation color scheme from. So you know that stuff has to be out there. So that's another um, interesting um, avenue to go down for people who want to create um, information like that. And again, there's another piece in here. Um, I'm not going to put it in there just yet, but there is the archive learning materials working group documentation templates where there's a template for a white paper, there's a template for a use case, there's a template for a course. So if there's things that you, additional resources and suggestions that um, you need instead of going out of the community, we want that to be available to the community too. So that's all in there too. And again, um, yeah, this should be down here. Sorry, oh, it is, it's there twice. Um, so that's like some of the things um, that we want to be able to recommend to the community. And then um, we want uh, a way to put these 
new guidelines or suggestions offer them to the people who already have documentation for when they update it. So not just new documentation, but suggestions for um, information that should be um, available to the community in a standardized way, you know, not, you know, forcing you to use a template, but, you know, certain things have to be in, in certain readme docs and we can go into that in, in let's see how much time we have for this year. We can go into that in a few minutes. Um, and then finally, um, well, the, the mentee also would be doing announcing this stuff, kind of marketing the new, you know, available documentation, guidelines, templates, and suggestions. Um, and then finally, um, there is the um, other task force for best practices and a huge, not a huge section, but a section of that has to do with what documentation should be available to the community for a project to get this best practice badge. Uh, we need to work closely with um, that section. So again, the mentee might have a little part in that. I'm not really sure how that's gonna play out. Again, we have to decide that as the community. So does anybody have any questions about like kind of where this task force mentee program is going? Nope, okay, then I'm just gonna keep moving on um, again. And I know um, Anisia, you saw this last week. Um, that was in the onboarding. Yeah, that, no, that was the onboarding, we'll get there. Um, but so some of these um, also I left out here, which I really do need to add is user guides for people coming into the community. Again, um, that's a little bit of onboarding, but we're working with the onboarding task force for those things. So, um, each project should, you know, everybody should be able to use the project through the documentation and we should be able to supply um, the users in the community. Let's see if this works. Oh, it's going to. I got a little fancy and I put the users that I took out of what I gleaned from Ben's presentation last week in here. So there are the maintainers, which are, again, the, the most important uh, people were trying to help because if they don't have the documentation right, no one else can use the use their tools and their projects. Um, so the maintainers have to, um, they're like almost like the code managers, and then there's the coders. So those are new code contributors, people coming into the community. How do they know which project they need to go to? How do they know how to do their first best, you know, pull request and all that other fun stuff? So there needs to be documentation for that as well. And then if you're a new TOC member, again, this is a little ancillary, but you know, there's policies and procedures as TOC members we need to follow that it, it's nice to have them somewhere. Um, again, they are somewhere, they are in the TOC, but you have to dig for them and find them. And we're trying to make everything a one or two click find. Um, and then there's the SIG chairs and task force leaders who are not um, TOC members. You know, they need to know how to set up their meetings, how to control their calendars, how to do that. And they should be able to find that information pretty quickly, um, whether we create videos for that uh, or, you know, again, that would be up to the mentee and the information that we can, you know, pull out of um, the needs from the surveys. Um, and then community contributors, people who are just interested, business owners, business people, you know, I'm an employee of a telecom company that's been going to a hype that my boss has been talking about a hyperledger meeting. I don't know what that is. I want to research it. I want to see what he's talking about. How do I get into the community? I mean, there's really no easy way um, except for the wiki page and the website, which again is something that the onboarding committee is taking on. But again, these users, these personas, they all kind of need to have help getting and creating. And once they're in the community, we also want them to use the templates and create new materials. So again, um, one of the things that um, if anybody wants to um, tackle, so whether you're the uh, a mentee applying, you can help out the task force right now um, and just get a flavor for it. Or again, anyone who wants to jump in and just help, all you need is your uh, Linux Foundation ID, and then you'll get this toolbar here to edit. Um, if you want to add what um, 
right now what documentation you think each one of these personas should have would be great. Um, again, we do have that uh, GitHub um, for the maintainers or number one clients, as I call them. Um, which we need to fill out to make this easy. Ooh. To add content and someone to control that. And again, Tracy in this task force is the, the one really who's been spearheading that. And I know she could, you know, want some input from other people as well. Um, so oh, let's go back. Um, so if anybody wants to start tackling any of these projects, that's great. Um, We'd appreciate the help. And then as I did this, I was so proud of myself. I found out from the onboarding task force in the, the YouTube video from last week that there's a new logo. <laughs> it's like, I just got so creative. Um, so we're having, um, I'll talk about that in the next part of this call, which is onboarding. But does anybody have any questions um, about how to help out this week? Or again, if you just want any of these things to be expanded on would be, Awesome. Um, any questions before we move to onboarding? Uh, hi, can you explain the personas part and uh, what do we have to do in that? Um, actually, sure. I'm going to more get into that um, with the onboarding, but hold on. Let me just refresh my screen so I can get rid of the blue. Um, in the um, call um, and presentation, and I'll show you how to access that from the onboarding call last week, um, Ben, who works for um, Hyperledger, um, they're all coming out with a new uh, look and feel for the website, trying to make it easier to get um, places, and they're looking for the task force's input. Um, and so he gave a presentation as to where like, the website is getting a whole re redo soon. Um, so everybody's waiting. And when he did that presentation, um, I just grabbed kind of what I thought personas for documentation would look like. Um, and that's what I came up with. Um, it, if anyone thinks there should be more people on here, less people on here, um, please add a button, stick a dot in there, write a note next to it for, for or, you know, jump on a uh, call with me and we can, you know, figure it out. Um, but those are the people. And now my next step or our next step is to figure out what each one of those six groups needs, um, you know, and, and how to best present that information to them when they are onboarding. So again, we're working, documentation is going to be working really closely with three groups, the mentorship project group to offer documentation assistance, the onboarding group um, to, to offer the documentation backup for people coming into the community um, and the um, best practices uh, program um, to find out what each project needs to get that best practice badge and a documentation lens. So um, again, those are just the personas that I thought needed documentation support. Um, and I'm not really sure what each one needs. Um, so that again is where kind of the task force is, is discussing, um, what each one of those groups would need, um, in a best practices Avenue and in an onboarding Avenue, um, and any other Avenue we can think of. Did that answer your question? Uh, yeah, definitely. Thank you. Okay. Great. So again, if anybody wants to, this is our wiki page. Anyone can edit it. Just put, you know, the date you're working on something and just start at the top um, so that it's the next thing we see when we come to our meeting next week. Um, and any help is greatly appreciated. So if there's no more questions for documentation, I'll open it for just another few seconds. No. Nope. Okay, then I'm going to move to the onboarding task force. Now, again, you'll see the same little graph that I put on both. Um, so today for onboarding, let me recap what the onboarding task force is. Again, we were looking at um, the wiki page and the web. Actually, we have a few places um, where people come in. Um, one is the website. 
and we had looked at use and learn and participate and we had our, our, our opinions on that. Um, but you have to watch Ben's video, which is up here. Um, I'll show you the YouTube link um, because the website's getting completely redone, relook, re menus are all being done. And again, he went through it and asked for our opinion. So it, he, they're interested in uh, what we feel is an easy way to onboard people from the website. The next thing we were talking about is the wiki page and the get started and the initial um, get started uh, page. All it has is a 12 minute or not a 12 minute, but a six minute presentation. It's a great presentation, but we decided that it's probably best on that page to have some quick links to other things, not just the presentation and maybe have some of the information from the presentation um, tabbed so you can go right to what you're looking for. Um, so we were discussing that, and that's something that the mentee will be working on, as well as this task force is to what that, you know, onboarding wiki page homepage needs to look like. We're also looking for um, assistance from um, other task forces that have to do with the uh, start here and the um, best first um, issue um, information, too, because that's part of the onboarding process for those new coders. Um, and then the other place was the GitHub, um, and Elena was going to uh, give us a report on that this week, but she's not here. So that uh, her report was going to be what happened her, for her recommendation here was going to be what happens when you hit Hyperledger from the um, GitHub repository as opposed to anywhere else. Is it easy to maneuver? Is it two clicks, one click, 10 clicks, that kind of information? Um, and Devesh, did you do the Discord channel? Uh, yeah, I, I noticed some points and I, I do have them written. Okay. Um, do you want to edit this page and share your screen? Uh, um, uh, do I need to write the points, which I think should be? No, 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 no. Else? If you want to add them later, like, that would be helpful so that we have them. But if you just want to discuss them, that would be great too. Uh, sure, I would like to discuss them. Uh, should I share my screen? Oh, yes, let me unshare. Sorry, I knew there was something I was missing. Okay. I'll just... Of course, I'm having a problem with that. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so is my screen visible? Yes. Okay, so... So the first thing I noticed was the welcome screen. Uh, no one really interacts in the welcome. So I think there should be a new welcome channel for the newcomers only. And before that, I would also like to discuss there should be some rules written for the newcomers only. Now these rules are basically on code of conduct, but I think there should be rules for the newcomers. So like they can, uh, it can contain some links regarding the documentation on how to get started, what is Hyperledger and uh, some like calendar links, etc. on meetups. Uh, the uh, next thing I would, uh, I think should be included is uh, newcomers meet or which can be done frequently, weekly or monthly. Uh, in that, uh, the newcomers can introduce themselves and, um, and I think we can tell them uh, what a Hyperledger is and what is the goal of uh, Hyperledger and how they, they can contribute in it. Contribute in it. So, uh, I, and I think uh, there should be a welcome channel after that. And in the in that channel, they can introduce themselves, uh, themselves basically and ask doubts. Uh, like as of now, uh, the, like when I came to came in this group, uh, I asked my question in the general because everyone was asking their questions in it. And no one was asking in the welcome section. Uh, the next thing I think should be, yeah. Uh, we should have a good first issues channel, which can like have the good first issues, which are there in the GitHub uh, uh, projects uh, so that the newcomers can know of it and contribute in it. The next thing I think uh, can be uh, yeah, FAQs channel. So like common questions, uh, like how they can contribute resources and uh, many uh, other things which I cannot think of right now. I'm sorry. So I think these are some points which I noticed can be improved upon. Uh, yeah, thank you.
That's great. I didn't even um, consider that like what was or wasn't on the welcome channel. So thank you. That's wonderful. Yeah, thank you. And again, when we're um, doing as part of the task force, um, trying to redo the discord, that's something hopefully you'll work with the mentee with, um, with your suggestions. Um, let me just fix this. Update, okay, go back to this. Okay, so I put, um, basically real quick what you had said um, for the welcome screen, um, there should be like the calendar meetup information, information about when the local meetups are, information on how to get started. And I do love the idea of a welcome channel where frequently asked questions could be, or common community questions and, and a good first issue channel. So really thank you for that work. That's, that's wonderful. Um, Again, I know Tracy had been talking about those frequently asked questions, and that is a great task for one of the mentees to work on. Um, you know, so that's something that when we're working up here on uh, the deliverables and the timeline for the mentee, that's definitely, I should just put it up here now before we. Technical term, redo. Perfect. My technical terms. Um, okay, so to recap, okay, so we'll go over Ben's presentation a little bit. Um, he had, um, and the link is again right on that wiki page. Um, and I'll show you where on the wiki page. But he had talked a little bit about, computer's so slow. Come on. <laughs> I just read it in report on that. I'll be happy to share as well. So if you'll go back, let me see if I can get to. He has definite insights from the website. Oh, I think he had it over here. I'm going the wrong way. Part of being on the onboarding side. House pools, getting people right to the content quickly to, in this project. I'm sorry about that. I, I don't know where on yeah, the screen it is. But if you want to watch this video, it, it introduces what the um, new logo looks like, which is this if that's what they decide on. Um, so it's nice, it's clean, it's sharp. There's a new look and feel for the website. And this is the information, Devesh, that they had uh, supplied for the persona personas for the different um, people coming into the website um, and how we can assist them. So I thought that was interesting. Um, and again, I, I kind of used that a little bit for our um, personas for the documentation um, part. Um, here's a link to that YouTube video. It was very informative. Um, one of the things that I need to do now is for other reasons, for, for other things that I'm working on, um, I don't want to publish new things that have the old website if it's going to change within a week. So I'm going to try to get access um, to maybe some uh, Google Drive or some wiki page that might have early access to some of those um, that we can use in development, not for publication until obviously the announcement of the new website, but, you know, to get started working on that, um, I think that that would be good. And again, um, for onboarding, I still think that these are the same personas. These are the people, community members are going to be a lot of those um, people such as academia, such as the media, such as, you know, different um, avenues, they're going to come in as community members. They're not going to come in as new code contributors or any of these leadership positions, maybe a SIG chair, but first they have to be a community member to be a SIG chair because it's hard to know what you're leading if you haven't been involved. So again, those are the onboarding um, people I think that we're going to hit. We're going to see new logos. We're going to see a new website. Um, and Ben would like suggestions on the website. So if you do have time, watch that YouTube video. And again, 
edit the page, put the date you're editing and just say suggestions for Ben. And, you know, after watching the video, hear what he needs suggestions on and put your thoughts down. We'd love to go over them and get some new ideas. Um, so that would be something that if you want to um, look at um, anyone on the call can jump in on that task. Again, we do have to we do have two weeks before um, we have to do a, like a timeline for the deliverables for the uh, mentee project. Um, but we have, let me see if I have a link to that. This is it, I think this is the page. Oh, no, it is it. Uh, if you go to mentorship projects, We are at the bottom. And again, the uh, expected outcome. Um, wait, is this documentation? Oh, word, okay. Um, would be to uh, complete some of these tasks. And again, we've also added some tasks for the start here. Um, and for the website, um, the homepage. So that's worth looking into and figuring out um, for us how we're going to timeline that out for a mentee to accomplish um, the tasks. But again, I like the Discord channel as a way to get started um, for a mentee um, in the timeline. So I think that's a really good way to begin. Um, let me go see if there's any other points for today. Um, yeah, and just a discussion on the personas, like where these six people, where would they come into the community? Um, we do still have um, the uh, start here or recent issues, I think I called it, um, and suggestions for that. But we really need to talk to and figure out who's in charge of those pages right now and how we can um, help with that. So that's another task for this task force. I don't mean to use task a lot, but another deliverable for this task force is to figure out, you know, what's going on with the start here. How can we enhance it? And um, I know that that's more just for the one persona. And, you know, does anybody want to take a crack with David at this um, wiki page getting started? So when you hit getting started, um, getting involved with Hyperledger, you go right to the link to the PowerPoint. Again, we want that to be more marketable. We want it to be a, a way for all the personas because um, everybody, you see the, the homepage of the wiki, get started that you're, that's where you're going to go, no matter who you are. Um, and if you see your quick link, um, I don't, and again, that's something we need to work on, what those quick links will look like to get you one click away from where you need to be to get involved in the community. Um, what else do we have down here? Well, just our analysis of the different places um, and the presentation that um, this slide was taken from. Uh, these would be the people that, um, again, um, are coming into the community. There's the link for Ben's YouTube video. Um, anybody have any comments? Okay. Well, I hope everybody jumps on a task. I'm going to start putting out a page, um, a sub page on the onboarding and the documentation task forces uh, for a timeline. And I'll start working on um, the exact deliverables and go look at the mentorship program and see how many weeks. And again, um, if there's more people from India on the call, um, I think it, it we could go a couple hours earlier rather than keep you um, so late in the evening, um, we can start at not, or well, I know Tracy's out in Arizona, so maybe start 10 <laughs> or 11 instead of noon. Um, something to discuss at the next meeting. Um, again, does anybody have any comments, thoughts? Yeah, probably if you start at uh, an hour, it will be better. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Um, my computer was coming in and out. Okay, yeah, probably if you can start an hour earlier, it will be better. Oh, the timeline earlier. Yes, I will do that. 
Uh, I will. But you check your timings also. It shouldn't be very early morning for you. Um, I'm on the East Coast, so I could go three or four hours back. It's just the people on the West Coast that it's the middle of the morning. It's like 5 a.m. or 4 a.m. Oh. Um, so, but dropping it back like an hour or two is not a problem. Um, so that's something we'll, I'll ask David about next time I have him on a call and see if we can maybe start at 11 or or 10. If it doesn't conflict with any other calls in the community, uh, we'll see if, you know, that's a, something we can do. Okay. Yeah, great. No worries. And and hopefully maybe they'll you'll see a calendar change during the week for that. Um, yeah, actually, one, like, yeah. Uh, if you make it one hour earlier, there won't be any conflict. But if you make it two hours earlier, there is a conflict with uh, Hyperledger um, Healthcare uh, Special Interest Group. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for making me aware of that. And I'll put that in my email to David that I'll um, ask for the time change. Yeah. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for your help. Anybody have any more questions? All right. I'm going to close the call. Thank you all for coming. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Yeah, Bobby, just before we just close the call. Yes. Uh, I sent you an application to review on LinkedIn. Can you please check that out? Yeah, I saw that you linked in me. That was great. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. cool. That's it. I'm trying. I'm trying to get to ten thousand followers. <laughs> Nine thousand. <No, that's>... <laughs> no, I actually sent you an application for a review, and you still to check it out. So. Yeah, I don't think we start until the um, application process closes. So we really don't have access to the mentees. Uh, information where, you know, there's no reason that we, you know, you and I, you know, can't continue to uh, work together, and, but we don't look at the applications until the pro uh, the program closes for accepting. Oh, them. oh I see. I see. I, I was not aware of that. Thank you for letting so me know. So we have two more weeks. That's why it's great that you're on the call. Get, get, get an idea if this is, you know, where you want to be. I appreciate it. Yep. 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 That's great. Okay. Thank you, everybody. I'll see you next week, maybe an hour earlier. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.